Hi, my name is Juan Manuel Parrilla. I will try to introduce you to Prow. What is Prow? Prow is like a CI CD natively for Kubernetes. It's the platform where Kubernetes is tested, uh, OpenShift is tested, and all the PRs, all the merges, and also all the, this kind of things is, happens. And yeah, let's bootstrap this one. I'm senior software engineer at Red Hat, and I love programming and, inter and OpenSafe and Kubernetes lover. And this is more or less the agenda. I don't think that I updated in the last uh, PR, but it's fine. It's almost, almost this, this thing, OK? Let's get started with Prow. As I said, it's a CI CD system that is based on Kubernetes and is more um, attached to GCE, GKE, and yeah, it's, it's an opinionated platform, let's say. Then um, you could manage your GitHub repo through this using ChatOps, which is like I will put a comment in a PR. With that, you could. Uh, Let's say your Jihad bot will take care about all the PRs, all the merges, all the, I don't know, all, put all the labels on the right PR, right merges. And it's made in Golang, which is cool. <laughs> all the manifest, all the configuration are and stored in, in secrets, config maps, and also in, in just the deployment that you put on the, on the prow. Um, then the behavior is more like operators. Uh, it's an infinite loop where uh, the component will check the configuration on the config map, and with that will will happen some things. Uh, could be interacting in between some, let's say, components, or maybe just um, acts, uh, um, acts to the against the GitHub repo, or just create a build, create a test pod, or whatever. Okay. And I create this presentation in order to have some kind of guidance for the people that could, they could use it. But the, um, it's like a script, OK? Then you could use it as a documentation, and you could put your hands on, and it's fine. But I could not stop in every, in every step that I put here, because it's like 80 slides. And yeah. This is how it looks like the, the prow pods in the control plane namespace. Um, as I said, store all the configuration in config map and secrets. Uh, we have two namespaces, two main main spaces, namespaces. The first one is the, the control plane one, which is by default default. And the second one is it's called test pods, which all the jobs will be triggered. And this is how it looks like. We have uh, like five or six main components. I will talk about them. And this is all the services that are, that are up on the, on the cluster. I think the main ones are deck, hook, and tide. But yeah, I will go through them a bit later. Let's go with the control plane. OK, hook. What is hook? Um, I think almost the, the, the word is self-explanatory. But the thing is, hook will take the, com the communication between components and also with GitHub. Uh, then GitHub will talk with hook, and hook will talk with whatever, tide or deck or whatever component that makes sense. Um, it's a stateless deployment, which involves pods and PBs. And dispatch all the all the all the calls to the other components. The other component is called Plank. I think is most base one. Um, manage the job execution of every test that you have in your configuration on on, on just on your jobs, and manage also the life cycle of the of the of the jobs itself. Um, also have a, a cool feature, which is called Decorate. Uh, Decorates will add some, let's say, um, extra things to your jobs without put the explicit in every, every job that you, need, that you need to configure. 
then if you put the thing called decorator uh, to true in your presets, it's like um, all my logs or my artifacts that I create on my build will be uploaded to GCS, which is cool. You could have your own policy to delete, destroy, or store your artifacts. Um, you could create whatever, I don't, I don't know. Uh, if I need to use a secret that is not usually used on, the, on, the, um, on, on one job or whatever, uh, you could use these utility images. And yeah, you have many things with, with this uh, decorated decoration. It's very cool. Um, yeah, utility images will take care to bootstrap like four or five images and containers. Um, doing every, every image and every container will do um, different jobs. For example, there is uh, one called uh, init uploader, which is, uh, in, which is uh, in charge to upload the, the artifacts to, to GCS. And yeah, there are many. I will go through a bit, <laughs> I go through them a bit, but not so, not so deep, okay? Well, DEG is just a UI, it's informative. There, you cannot configure anything there, <laughs> but it's, it's informative. <laughs> You could see like um, every every PR, every merge, and every um, every job executed in, during the time. Um, here we have another one, which is called PR status. Uh, you could see how is your how is your PR, and how many commits have in in, the, in this PR. What is the um, the status and the author. Uh, Tech history, yeah. Uh, Tech history is like um, all the merge and all PRs that have been uh, triggered to your repo or your organization or, you know, you could manage organization and repositories by as, as you want, but um, you could see here uh, all, these, all these things. The action that will happen, uh, the target, and yeah, the base commit, which is starting the... the um, the thing. Um, also, the, the PR author and, and the PR status will show. Uh, it's like a query with its um, trigger to GitHub. It shows like um, which author creates how many PRs on the repo, and you know, you could see the status and all the labels that, that it has and something like that. Okay, let's go with two more, which is called. Orologium and Sinker. Orologium has not explicit configuration, but it's like um, the component that is in charge uh, to trigger all the periodic jobs, which is like a cron manager. <laughs> and Sinker is like a garbage collector. Uh, if you have like, I don't know, 20 jobs in a row in, the, in your test namespace, um, it's not... Uh, so clean, let's say. Then um, Sinker will take care to clean that stuff and keep the the workspace uh, clean. It has um, explicit configuration, Sinker, but it's like a, a, what is your um, pace to clean the jobs and this kind of things. Uh, tide. Tide is, I think, one of the most important. Manage retesting and merging uh, of PRs, and it needs another plugin called Trigger to make it work completely. Um, also, manage to um, sync the config map that you have in your configuration uh, in order to read every time that you need to sync with the GitHub repo or just to uh, have. Um, updated on your configuration file. Um, works with a pool of GitHub PRs, which is very cool. Uh, ah, yeah, uh, populates the, the, the deck dashboard. Um, yeah, it provides three models of merge, which is the same as GitHub do, does. 
and it's uh, merge squares and rebase. The bad thing that it's on prow it's the the vendor locking thing. It's very tight to GitHub. It's work and the pro guys. It's working on um, on GitLab to make it work, but still is not working at all. And yeah, it's ongoing. Cryer, I think, is the last one for the control plane. It's um, the notification daemon. And for example, if you work just with you know, um, GitHub, it's fine. If you have a pre-commit or post-commit, um, pre-merge or post-merge um, jobs, it's fine because GitHub will notify you when something happens. It's if every post will fail, it's fine, or will work, it's fine, will notify you. But the thing is, if you have a periodic job that doesn't have any context about your repo, about your, it's just a generic job, you don't have any way to notify you. Then this is the component that will happen, will make it happen. Then it have a split configuration, and for now I think I have just four, um, four providers to make it uh, you notify, and this is the for one. I think we will discover um, Slack in the configuration, but yeah, the configuration is just a secret with the OAuth token, and that's it. Okay, until now, any questions? All right, let's go with deploying thing. I think this is the most um, complex thing on the talk, but we have one way to do it easily, which is using Tackle. Tackle is a component uh, installed using Golang. It's a, it's a Golang tool. We will deploy a Kubernetes on GKE. It's a, I think by default it's like a three nodes cluster. It could be configured, uh, could be customized. But yeah, the the default one is is three nodes with uh, four CPUs and eight gigs of RAM, more or less. Um, and you could do it manually. But the thing is, if you use Tackle, the the Let's say the good thing, uh, all the ingress thing, all the load balancers are managed by the ingress, and in this case by GKE. Uh, if you do it manually, you you need to take care about the deploy the load balancer. If you need to uh, uh, customize ingress like engine nginx or something like that, and you need to configure uh, manually all those all those things, and it's not it's not great. <laughs> But as I said, uh, we will uh, base on this talk is based on the tackle installation. But here you have the sample of uh, manual installation. Okay. Uh, you need you need to configure your G Cloud account in your in your shell and your OAuth token. As I said, uh, I I put all the sample installation and all these things. You could just click on the, on the links and, and that's it. As a script, is, you need to create your uh, GC instance uh, on the manual installation, uh, deploy a Kubernetes, and with that, uh, clone the test infra repo and apply all the airbags, all the deployments, and that's pretty much it. It's not so complex, but all the ingress thing it's the bad part. You need to configure all the all the ingresses, all the all the things. Are. If you have um, like three three nodes uh, deployment, you need to configure load balancer and all these kind of things. If you use GKE, this will be done by uh, the cloud provider itself. Okay. Any questions? <laughs> I think yeah. Go ahead. No, uh, there is this tackle tool. It's like the operator, but it's not operator. It's just an executable, and there is not operator at all. Is there any initiative to create such operator? Uh, I don't think so. But it's, you, I think you don't like you don't 
need an operator at all because the update method is quite easy. And yeah, the, the Kubernetes people, I think, they are not uh, covering this, this, this thing. But yeah, PRs are welcome. <laughs> Wherever, um, wherever you want to deploy it, it's fine. But the thing is, you, uh, you need to be reachable by DNS, by GitHub, uh, configuring the webhook in the UI, and that's it. The, 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 the unique uh, thing that you need to fit is the GitHub thing. Yeah. What are the system requirements for the probe? Uh, depend on your test. If you have uh, jobs like uh, I need to to rise up uh, another Kubernetes in a Docker, you need uh, a very big machine. But you could configure clusters, which is called uh, like node selector, and you could have uh, a cluster called bare metal, and you could have your bare metal cluster in on premise, and you could have another one which is like cloud provider. Um, uh, fitting um, and then yeah, you, you could will configure this on on the on the jobs. And you put the node selector where when you need to point to another cluster. But how much resources do the pro itself? Uh, just pro uh, without testing or just testing mm, minimal thing. It's like uh, one node with. Eight gigs of RAM, maybe four, and yeah, eight, 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 eight is better. Uh, two CPUs or four, it's fine. It's no more on that. All right, let's go with the configuration. Um, by default, Tackle will not deploy the SSL thing, but uh, in this uh, presentation, I configure um, Pro with uh, third manager. And you have all the uh, a sample deployment and also all the stuff to configure the issuer against against the let's encrypt, uh, create the issuer, create the certificate, and with that create the ingress. This will create the load balancer on GC, and with that will point to the right pro instance, which is this one. Um, I have all the execution here. I let him like two dates in a row just to get some history. And yeah, for example, if I go here, I could see the, the logs execution for this job <coughs> and this for this one. OK, uh, to configure is you need just to deploy Ether Manager, uh, configure the issuer against lesson script. In this case, it's Acme, Acme base. And with that, I create the ingress. That's it. Let's encrypt will recall um, and create the, the CA and create all the manage all the all the certificates. Okay. And here's the the big thing: the configuration, the plugins, the labels, and the jobs. Um, you could um, merge configuration and jobs, but the good way to do it is to separate jobs from configuration. I think it's quite nice to have it separated. And if you have a very big uh, organization or repository, it's, it's recommendable to do it in this way. Um, let's go with a config file. Uh, for example, this is the, the config file. No, this is the plugin file, sorry. Uh, pa, 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 pam. Yeah, this is the config file. Um, here, uh, here we have like um, the no section thing, which is the default things like log level for debugging, uh, pod name spaces, and pro name space. You need to configure the proper air, um, airbag for if you change the name spaces. Um, type configuration, which is um, uh, config, uh, configuring the sync, peri sync period, which will recall the config map and update the live configuration that it has on their pod. Uh, all the 
merge method for, for your repositories. In this, in this case, we are configuration merge method for all the repositories, all the repositories that we have on the, on the, the Shadowman organization, GitHub organization. And all the queries that you need to fill to make this merge happen. Then uh, you need, for example, I have a PR on Pro DevConf repository, and I need to get this merge happen by by the by the GitHub bot. Now uh, I need to make this um, make all these uh, all these requirements fit. We don't need to have don't do not merge do not merge hold work in progress or invalid owner file, and I need I at least two labels look good to me and approver. It needed to to allow Ty to make to merge this PR. Uh, PR status is a it's a page on the on deck, but it's not it's not a big thing. I will I will go through this um, syncer configuration. Uh, just the garbage collector. I remember in you. Um, the this is this is the. Like, what is the the path that where you will store your logs and your artifacts in uh, in your in your GCS bucket? And I just copy paste uh, a configura a template configuration. <laughs> I, I think this is the best way because it's a mess to get this configured. Okay. Um, job URL job URL prefix config, which is where I will store the. The artifacts, uh, well, timeout will happen. And the decoration thing, I think this is very useful. The utility images that I talked before is cloud, uh, clone ref. I will use this image and this version of the image. Uh, the init upload for uh, upload things to, to GCS, entry point to get bootstrap the, the container and pod. And the sidecar. If you need a sidecar, you could you need to decorate the the pro the pro job. Uh, deck uh, which um, which uh, artifacts will create uh, on the um, on the execution and presets, which is like um, all my jobs that have this label will have this configuration. It's not a big thing, but it's useful to don't repeat yourself in the in the job description. Okay, uh, pa -pa -pam. I saw. I think I saw almost all in this. Pa -pa -pam. Spyglass. Yeah, and here we get to the. I uh, we already have my configuration done. I will show the plugin, but I will talk about I'll talk, I will talk about it later. Ba, 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 plugins, yeah. Here's the plugin thing. I think the config updater is the best one. Um, when you create a PR uh, against your configuration repository, you could have like a um, um, automated pool. Well, when a component will trigger the configuration from GitHub repo, and from that will update the config maps. I think it's very convenient to have it configured on a, on a, on your CI/CD system, and it's it's as I said very convenient because if you create if you are working with many people in in a team, it's it's okay to have uh, separated folders for every repo that you are managing, and I think I will show an example. Uh, this is a repository where it's located um, and manages all the um, all the jobs of our uh, organization. This organization is like um, maybe twenty repositories. And every repository has their own their own folder, and inside of every folder you have like, well, this is not the right one. Let's go with this one. It's like a periodic jobs, pre-summit jobs, post-summit jobs, and 
if you have some presets um, configured for this, you could uh, use it. Okay. And with that, um, would you just just point to the use and another another tool called Basel, which is a build configuration or build, let's say, build uh, program where you just have many commands uh, done in Golang, and you just need to use a a tool which is called Chess Config, just to ensure to don't upload uh, um, bad configuration to your CI/CD system. Then with that, um, you just need to update your config maps, uh, and that's it. If you are already configured your config updater, you don't need to configure your config maps. Uh, the PR will take care to, to do it by, by itself. I will show... Um, an example of um, of a bo, 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 of a pull request already done and merge against the configuration and how I think this is it. Yeah, this is a PR already against the configuration. Uh, some folks help me to do that because you cannot approve your own uh, PR. Then I think it's. It makes totally sense. Um, when he puts something like "look good to me" or "approve" on the on the um, on the repo on the PR, the bot will take care about uh, approve the PR and merge the PR, and will notify you which uh, configuration or um, config max will be updated. In this case, uh, plugins have been updated and job config have been updated. Have been updated. Uh, this, the, this periodic one and the presumptive one. The bot will inform you how the configuration has changed and it will be published on the PR. I think it's very convenient and if you will do in a serious way, I think you need to configure, in, configure it in your repo. Okay, with that we could start with plugins. Any question until here? Okay. Plugins. I think it's another another thing that is very important. It's very extensible and it's not very complex to create a, your own plugin for Prow. Um, this is the the main configuration for for plugins, the main file, and I could show you. This is one. Um, you could configure for your organization and um, you, the, the Pro will take care about extend if you put some repo just to uh, extend the configuration of, of to this repo. Then if you put your, to, your config, uh, to your organization all these, kind, all these repos, uh, all these uh, plugins, sorry, um, it's fine, and for every repo that you want to configure separately, you could do it in this way. Uh, um, you have, um, the other thing that you need to configure for to make um, tight working in a proper way, it's these triggers, which will take care about the merging, and with that it's fine, it's not so complex. Also for approving, you could have uh, more configuration. In this case, it's just uh, uh, implicit self-approve, uh, which means uh, when I uh, create a PR, I assume, I, uh, let's say the bot will assume that I put a look good to me. And look good to me as, as approve. I put as false because it's not always the case. And also, uh, a good thing you can do, you can do is like uh, look good to me. Uh, review will act as a, as a look good to me. If you review the the PR, it will take care about all this all this look good to me. It's not doesn't make sense to repeat yourself. I enter already on that. Pa -pa -pa, config updater. I already talked about it. 
Uh, yeah, the config maps. Uh, it's in the control plane, uh, in the control plane namespace, and we have four config maps. They are these ones, and yeah, you just need it's a YAML base, and it's parsed by tide. Okay. Uh, if you separate your job config from your configuration, uh, you need to decorate your every deployment that you have on your name on your pond plane uh, to include these lines, uh, which is the I will have my separated um, job configuration. Um, I need to mount the volume in the in this path and also in uh, in this. Uh, and I also need to use this config map. That's that's pretty much it. Um, you have a link for for to do it here. And this is how it's like a repository based on on separated jobs by every repository. Okay, by periodics, pre summits, and blah blah blah. This is how how it looks like the the, the a, a successful PR. And another one I think it's very cool, it's approvers and owner labels. Uh, which you'll, will, you could manage uh, with this, uh, with this um, plugin in a, very granular, in a very granularity way. Uh, what, I, what this means is like I could put an owner file on every folder that I have on my repo and with that, in this, in this owner file, I could put separated owners. And just them could manage this folder. I think it's very cool because uh, every job in the, in the configuration and every job in, the, in, the, in your prow instance could be different or managed by different people or different teams. Then this could make your day. Uh, also, you have another thing which is meritus approvers, which is like um, temporary uh, approver. And yeah, you also have filters. Filters will apply some labels to the to the PR or to the jobs in base of these uh, regex expressions. And yeah, it's not so complex, but the owner labels is it's very let's say useful for when you have like, I don't know, 50, 50 labels to manage. Yeah. One thing that is not displayed on, on the, on the prow documentation is you need to create all the labels on the repository. If the, if you will I recall this label on, on a plugin that you don't have, you need to create by yourself, but we created um, an image that will this ma make this for you. Look to me, approve, blah, blah, blah. Questions on plugins? Yeah. What's the difference between the reviewers and the approvers exactly? Sorry? What's the difference between the reviewers and the approvers? Ah, yeah. Uh, reviewers uh, have not the same, let's say, credentials. Uh, reviewers will just could be like a contributor, and approvers could be like owners on the GitHub repo. More questions? Yeah. Can I set up some rules that, for example, I need uh, two, two reviews to pass yeah. from two guys, not only one? Yeah, yeah, it's, it, this is by default the, the, the behavior. Like Google to me, yeah. And then it's okay. Yeah, after that, uh, another needs to approve that. And you have another another um, plugin called Bunderblos, if I remember correctly, which is uh, the, the the plugin in charge to assign the PR to all, already to reviewers, which is cool. If you don't, then you you don't need to go through GitHub uh, repo and assign their reviewers manually. More questions? Okay. Is it yeah. based on the git blame or something like that? Uh, no, it's just to assign, uh, if you have a PR and it's not managed by anyone, 
uh, Vanderblast will take care to uh, get the owner's file, see the reviewers, and assign them the, the PR to manage uh, the look to me and review code and all these kind of things. Is there some plugin that adds on git blame and uh, see that, oh, this file was, modi was modified last by this, this one, this guy, and this is th not really the owner of this file because he wrote it there? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think so. Um, okay. Uh, automatic management of the GitHub repo is quite easy. You just need to configure um, um, the webhook on GitHub repo or on organization, which is the, the normal way. Um, you need uh, all, all the involved components will be Plank, Tide, and Deck. And this is the, the usual behavior. Uh, Plank will take the utility images and ready to GSS bucket. Uh, Tide manage the self-merging and, and testing the jobs. And just uh, on Deck will show you the, the status of all these actions. And again, use check config because uh, if you, are, you have separated a configuration from jobs, um, the configuration will not give you any error, and you could upload it. But uh, you need to go to execute check config to get the errors on the jobs. Type will not say anything about it's working or it's not working. But you could, for example, check the job config in order to know how many jobs you have. Then, for example, um, Uh, ba -ba Here we have all, all our config maps. I will get a job config, for example. And as you can see, I have one periodic job for this, um, this file and two jobs for this, other, fi for, for this uh, other file. The thing is, for example, if I have four jobs and you don't have one of them in them um, in the config map, you have an error on your configuration, but Tide will not say anything about that. It's, it's very cool. <laughs> OK. Um, the way to replace manually your, your thing, if you are doing things fast because you are pushing, you're very uh, pushing it. And yeah, question on that? It's quite easy to configure your repo. Okay, let's go with testing. We have three, th three kind of jobs here. Pre-summit, post-summit, and periodics. The thing is, the periodic ones don't, doesn't have any context, as I said. And you need to put all the extra argumentation on the, on the, on the job. And it's something like this one. Um, extra refs will point to the right repo to clone and to manage. You could put whatever you want, like it's, it's, a, it's an array, then you could just fill it wherever, uh, one, wherever you want and put whatever you want on, on, on that, whatever you repos want, <laughs> sorry. Uh, the node selector, as I said, you could put the cluster here. In this case, it's uh, primary. But uh, if you put, it did, do that, doesn't put, put anything here, it's fine. But we'll run in the same cluster that you are running Pro. And this is the image, the, the image definition. The commands and the argumentation, it's, it's the usual for, for Kubernetes. Uh, Pre-summit is when you have a PR already submit to, to GitHub, it's ongoing and are the tests that are on execution. Um, to make the, um, the PR happen, you need to fill all the tests and finish and finish for successfully. If not, will fail and you need to check the, the bots and so on. Uh, ba -ba -ba. This is the configuration for, for pre-summit. You don't need any context here because uh, you already have it on the PR, you already have the the repository, the organization, and yeah. You could put some things like a script report. I don't need to report tight, whatever. 
uh, always run. In every commit that you have on the PR, we'll run this test. If not, you could just um, disable it and that's it. Uh, decorate, I always use decorate at true. Then the name of the, the, the job and that's it. After that, we have the post summit. I think this is more like uh, after when you already merge a PR, all the execution that you need to execute on the on the um, on the pro. For example, if you need to already have my Kubernetes um, my Kubernetes version already done, it's tested, it's merged. I need to spread all the images to G, uh, to Google Compute. You could do it with this one. This is the aspect of the job. It's more or less the same for like uh, pre-summit. And that's it. It's not more complex than that. Any questions? OK. Notifications. As I said, the, the thing for notification is on periodic jobs, do, you don't have any notification. With Cryer, you could do it. Um, you, de you define on the configuration which is the behavior in order to get notified. For example, um, you need to configure the, the Cryer um, airbag and the Cryer deployment to, because by default it's not deployed on, on your pro instance. And also you need to create a generic <coughs> secret which contains the Slack token and that's pretty much it. With that you have it config, uh, you have it let's say, prepare to get configured. And with that, with this configuration, you have, have it configured. Uh, job ties to report. For example, if I have already configured our GitHub notification, we don't have to get it configured by Cryer. Then I will avoid to put like pre-summit and post-summit uh, on this one. I just, I just have uh, periodic and batch ones. And uh, the state of the, of the report could be like uh, just uh, ping me when it fails, for example. The channel of the, the Slack channel where will be notified and the template. This job, whatever name, uh, will uh, have been failed on this link. And the link will be like uh, pointing to the logs and that's pretty much it. It's not, it's not a big thing. Oh, oh, yeah. Any questions? Other similar project? Uh, Jenkins? <laughs> um, yeah, but it's not based in the same base. It's like, for example, you could use Tool, which is uh, used by OpenStack guys. Um, there are many of, of it. The thing is, uh, Prow itself is not a complete thing. Uh, you need like uh, more high level, let's say component like pipelines. You don't have it here. You need like something like Tecton or something like that that will join to this pro thing and will take manage to all the pipelines and all these things. And for example, do you already have one thing called external plugins, which is not explained in this, in this deck, but it's fine. Uh, you could use a Jenkins, a Jenkins external server to execute some jobs. Or, yeah, external plugins is okay, but you need to put it manually in the pro, in the pro instance, and yeah, it's, it's a bit mess, but it's very useful. And here you have all the references. Where I put all. Oh. <laughs> there are many of them, and yeah, it's done. Yeah. <laughs> Questions? Can it be integrated with something else than, than just GitHub, like GitLab or something from Reddit? Yeah, the thing is, uh, for now, not for now, uh, they are working on, on a GitLab integration, but it's not working at all for now. It's, the PR is on, it's ongoing. Can I, can I have yeah. uh, like one 
Supra and multiple clusters that yeah. uh, I can uh, run in it? Yeah, you just need to add it as a cube node. With that, you are fine. It's a, well, depending on what do you need. I mean, do you have already one test namespace where all the pods will run, all the pods mix. Uh, you don't have any name on them, then you cannot identify by, let's say, uh, just seen. You need to go to the PR and see which uh, number it's, it's been executed and but you don't have any way to separate the jobs for now uh, from the repository that you are managing. All right, thank you.